Detective Daisuke Kanbe has no problems using his own fortune to solve crimes, even if he assesses human lives based on their financial worth. Compassionate Haru Kato sees all life as sacred and is sickened by Daisuke's materialistic ways. Can they stop butting heads and overcome their opposing worldviews for the sake of solving the toughest crimes in the precinct? Hey everybody, welcome back to another First Impressions video here at A Week in Geekdom. Geo here, and today we're taking a look at the series The Millionaire Detective Balance Unlimited. This is a new anime series produced by Cloverworks and is directed by Tomohiko Ito, and it's inspired by a novel of the same name written by Yasutaka Sutsui. So what is the series all about? Well, I read a brief description at the beginning of the video, and yeah, we're following this character, Daisuke Kanbei, this playboy detective who is assigned to the Modern Crime Prevention Headquarters. This headquarters has officers that often have or they have caused problems, I should say, for the Metropolitan Police Department in Japan. And in this department, we see the, uh, the modern crimes prevention. We see our second protagonist, Haru Kato, a man who is a very honest, uh, grounded, real detective slash cop. He had his runnings with the previous uh, police department where, you know, he eventually was let go because, uh, you know, he's a little bit too moralistic, I guess. But I have this clash between a playboy eccentric uh, millionaire who has an unlimited cash fund to do basically whatever the heck he wants. The character only has to uh, reach for his glasses, I think, and it activates sort of like this... Uh, satellite network with his butler and is able to produce an obscene amount of money and get whatever the heck he wants. This on a first impressions basis alone, if I were to tell you what this series is about, I gotta be honest, the first thing that came to mind was, okay, Daisuke is basically a Bruce Wayne persona you know, the, the fake persona that he uses to uh, infiltrate and shoo people away and, and, you know, mingle with the high society. A playboy version of Bruce Wayne who has unlimited money with his butler, coincidence, solving crimes, eccentric crimes, I guess, in Japan. Just erase all the Batman stuff, all the uh, cape and cowl stuff. <laughs> That's how I uh, sort of... Uh, saw the character in my eyes and i like that you know you have a character like that who's so eccentric and odd compared to uh, haru who's more honest uh and and realistic and toned down you see it even in the way that they dress you know obviously one doesn't have the money that the other one uh, possesses but still there is this interesting contrast of two different ideologies of uh, going about solving crimes and stuff. When I first started watching the series, I had no clue what it was about. Uh, typically when I watch a new anime, I do as little research as possible so as not to be influenced or to get a preconceived idea about that show. I want to go in uh, cold turkey and experience the thing as it was intended, so I, I didn't know what it was about. I just saw the poster image or the key visual and it looked pretty interesting. So with this new season, I said, you know what, yeah, I'll, I'll check it out. And it turned out to be a pretty fun, action-packed series that, um, you know, it's only the first episode, I know, but it sort of has this realistic approach, even though you have a character that has an unlimited money, you're still dealing with real people. They're not exaggerating the police work and all that stuff even though he has like these high-tech glasses or equipment to access funding and uh, pay off people and all that stuff it's all somewhat realistic also when the the character of uh, Daisuke Kanbei first shows up I wasn't aware that the series was 
you know, 50% about him and the other 50% about Haru. And when I saw him, I thought, okay, this is a terrible character. Look what he's doing in the streets. But then I figured out, oh, okay, yeah, you know, he's a little bit uh, odd and is using his resources to fix problems in a different way that other characters would go about it. Meanwhile, the character of Haru, he... Um, He's trying to be the best cop that he can be. He was kicked off the uh, police department and is now in this crime prevention headquarters and he gets made fun of from his former colleagues. But, you know, that, that's not going to stop him. And when he sees uh, stuff going down, he's going to take action just like the best of them. So I like his character a lot and I'm very interested in, uh, like I said at the beginning, the clash of ideologies where you have uh, a grounded, realistic character with this uh, over-the-top persona of um, uh, that is Daisuke, I should say. The art is fantastic. Uh, it is produced by Cloverworks, like I said at the beginning, and I love their style. It's, it's stylized, but it's realistic in a way. Uh, you know, Cloverworks did... Uh, Promised Neverland, so, you know, they, they bring their A-game, and it looks fantastic. It looks like a real place. Yes, I know, it's a real setting, you know, it's based off uh, in Japan, and I, I, I assume it's Tokyo? I don't remember what city they were on, but it's everything looks real, like it could take place in, like, a live-action movie, uh, you know, a heist movie, if you will, but this is more of a detective mystery slash comedy series, but I like that the anime doesn't go, or at least on the first episode, I might be wrong later on, we'll see, but on the first episode, even though you have the whole concept with the glasses and the high-tech network, for the cash flow and stuff. I like that it's all real. They're trying, uh, on the first episode, they are trying to stop this uh, bomber who is targeting a foreign Arab prince. So it's based on things that have happened in real life. It's not uh, so far-fetched, even with the whole techie stuff and Kambe uh, talking about his butler and all that stuff. Um, I like that. It's a nice mishmash of uh, plot devices and tropes when it comes to shows like this. And uh, one of the other things that I found really uh, interesting about the series was to see it trending on Twitter for all the quote-unquote wrong reasons or the right reasons. I'll let you decide, but still that was pretty funny uh, that it's already amassed quite a following just on that alone. Uh, the characters are pretty interesting, like I just said. The plot is pretty grounded and believable, aside from the uh, unlimited budget thing. And yeah, I'm excited to see where it goes from here. There are two options. One, it could be a very episodic uh, case of the week series. It's only going to be like 11 or 12 episodes. So it could go that route and resolve the main plot by the end. Or it could just keep going with a straightforward plot all the way uh, to uh, its ending. So we'll see about that. But I am very much on board. I like the art style, the clash between the two characters. One is more honest and doesn't, um, you know, he is disgusted by the way uh, Daisuke resolves his things, how he works in the field. And, you know, Daisuke, he's got all the money, so he can probably do whatever the hell he wants and get whatever he wants. So, yeah, that's going to be interesting. Uh, overall, just a fun, action-packed, heist-inspired episode and a series that has a lot of style and gusto. I'm, I'm very much on board. I liked it a lot. Have you watched The Millionaire Detective Balance Unlimited? Let me know in the comments section down below. And if not... What are some of your favorite heist or mystery cop anime manga? Very interested in that as well. 
Guys, as always, follow me on your favorite social media platform, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, all that fun stuff. You can like, comment, subscribe, hit the little bell icon so you know when new videos pop up here on YouTube. Thank you so much for watching and supporting this channel. It truly means a lot to me. Uh, I am eternally grateful for your continued support. I've got to go. I've got more stuff to watch, read, and review, so I will catch all of you on our next episode. Thank you.